Thank you all for coming, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to say that first. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for the music. Um, so I want to know um, what what are the major differences you see in those three instruments, other than the differences related to the size, the physical size, because uh, they look identical to me. Yes. Just scale up and down. So let's watch this. So the violin and, and the viola. So you can see the viola is a lot bigger. So the violin has an extra string at the top that I don't have, and I have a string at the bottom that the violin doesn't have. But it's still have. just four. four. But it's still four strings. Yeah. Four strings. Yeah. And, and then, of course, there's quite a big difference here. But the bow length is different. Because they're higher, they have to use more bow than the jump. And, you know, faces. Yeah. Yeah. And there are some bows, actually, old bows, like... Um, some of them are a little bit shorter for violin and viola also. Like the sartori, I have a shorter. Mm. Yes? There's an A, D, G, and C. And C is mine. <laughs> right. There are two sides. Is that another question? There's one over here that we didn't see, I think. How many hours do you practice per day? All day, all day. Um, I'll take that one. It changes as your life changes, because sometimes when you have changes in your life, like children, like you, you get a little less time. So you have to be smarter. You have to do more with less time. But, um, uh, if I'm on a great day when I have whatever time I want, it's usually you know 90 minutes to two hours, but it depends. If we have to learn a lot of music for the symphony in a very short time, like for the next week, it could be more than that. But it's even more than, it's, it's not the amount of hours, but how you do, what you do at the time when you're practicing. Right. So you could actually practice less time and concentrate more than a lot of time and like picking up your phone or doing stuff like that. So you can use it as a goal to see how much you can take care. Because everyone's busy. They're busy in school and we're busy at home. So you try to figure out a way to concentrate so you can get more done in less time. And I have to tell you one thing, I never give up are my scales. If I give up the scales, then you do it here. A lot of, a lot of times, it's not taught, but that's the only way to keep playing in tune and keep your hands you know, in shape is to play third, six, octaves, all different rhythms with bowlings. And scales, scales, scales. I would second that. It took me until I was in college to realize that all of the music we play, whether it's contemporary or ancient, it's all based on different scales. So master the scale and you're mastering the foundation of music. And it took me a long time to learn. Yeah, I remember when I was in, um, back in middle school, well, one of my teacher, because I had to train this teacher at school, so she made me play the scales for half year, only scales, um, or three octaves, four octaves, and a third, the se uh, uh, oct uh, uh, I mean, uh, six, and a finger octaves, I mean, and everything. Wow. So, I mean, all my life was about scales, and I was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and I got it really worked. And I can say that my teachers didn't make me play scales when I was younger, and I think they were really wrong, and so on my own I play scales. And, and any student I've had, I've made them go through the whole scale book. Because I think it's real, and my, my kids also play, and I made them play scales, even though I didn't have to. I just didn't tell them. Scales, yes. Scales are important. Did you? Did you? Why do you shake your hand when you're like, Oh, so that's vibrato. I don't know if you're a string player. Do you play an instrument? Oh, yeah. Piano? Yeah. Okay, you don't get the vibrato. But I do, and it's... This is without, and this is... And you can do it fast and slow and wide and, and narrow, but it's, I guess it's safe to say we want to sound as much like a singer, uh, like a person singing as possible. So that's why we do it. It's called vibrato. Yeah. What's the difference between like first violin and second violin? Like for this kind of format, 
So is this always two wiring and one channel, one viola? Yeah, mostly, I think, for a string quartet, this is a very so, standard. Yeah, I was going to say, we call, Haydn is called the modern string quartet, even though he started writing them in 1750 or 60. But the modern string quartet is usually two violins, viola, and cello. Okay. Um, there are other so configurations. Kind of Standard. Standard. Mm -hmm. Oh, but to answer the question, between first, usually the first fiddle's got all the notes. <laughs> notes. And, and it's usually higher. But the second, higher. the second violin is just as important because yeah. it's oh, a, yeah. because it's just a different. It has a different role, just like the viola has a different role. Yeah. We all, each one of us has a certain role in the group. Sometimes, without. I mean, you can't just have a melody without all the yeah, harmony the way, and all the support. Yeah, the sound is much fuller uh, when, you know, when we uh, viola and second melody. We're like uh, in between those two voices. Yeah. Yeah, so we're important. Yeah. Like in a choir, you know, in a choir of singing, you have soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, right? And it would be very boring to have just a soprano. That's my job. Um, so this is all the harmony. This is all the um, inner workings of the music. And, and he would effectively be the bass, so it was really kind of like soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And it, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't sound like complete music to you if we didn't have the, what we call the inner voices. That's the second violin in viola. Um, <clears throat> Stephen? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um, what's the meaning of the song Jesus? What's the meaning behind this? What's the meaning of it? Do you want to know my version? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's open to interpretation, really. Mm -hmm. But, um, in Mozart's life, he was about 25 years old. He didn't live very long, but he, was, he wasn't any longer a young prodigy. He was about 25, and he, he met Haydn, who was very famous and rich, this composer that he dedicated it to. And he was um, very impressed with Mr. Haydn. And so I think he wrote these six quartets in some ways to um, express what he loved so much about Mr. Haydn as a teacher and a mentor. And so... I think there's a, to me, there's a lot of highest character in there. So a lot of laughing and a lot of optimism. And then the, the slow movement is, is almost like someone singing to you at the piano, you know, rather than, uh, that's just my, that's my version. That's a great question, though. You but the beautiful thing about music is that it's all non-verbal emotions. It's not words, but we, we get to offer what we think it is about. It's for you to decide. So we can certainly right. tell you. What's your version? That's a question. What do you think it means? It's up to you. Uh, I just want to ask, as a string player, if there was anything that maybe you practiced or you maybe you already got to an advanced level proficiency and you saw other people do that you thought, oh gee, I could have got here quicker had I done that. But any suggestions on sort of an intermediate level player that wants to Reaching into this level that you found was a good practice technique or something that, that helped you. Scales, scales, and metronome, and metronome. The thing, it's really, it's, you know, one teacher said there's this beautiful tedium that's like it's very tedious, it's very boring to practice scales, but if you get really, really good at them in all different temp tempos, all different times, faster, slower, and different configurations, you can play anything. And I was so bored by it, I refused to do it when I was younger. So could I have gotten there faster? Yes, I could. Can I add one thing? That to not get frustrated with your progress. As long as you stay with something, I think people blossom at different ages. And like I was in high school, and my orchestra director, we had four people in orchestra. It's not a great orchestra. <laughs> I played the cello. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had two cellos, a bass and a violin. It was just oh. awful. So, but my orchestra teacher told my parents, if you don't get Chris to a real teacher, he'll never make it. And it's happened this year. And that was like my sophomore year. Well, I didn't, I didn't do that. I waited to get a really great teacher in uh, like my senior year and then in college. So you take off at different times, but... Scales are one. <laughs> Scales help. Good to see. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Okay, thank you. Thank you.